feeling a bit blue, winter getting you down, Food Busker Chicken Soup to the rescue. Well, you, just give me this. Come <laughs> straight at the job, innit? I love how fascinated this one is. <laughs> no, I don't want the fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> Right people, at this time of year we're all hurting a little bit from the excess of December and I have got your bag with some chicken soup medicine. Inspired by Jewish penicillin and Cassis Deli in New York, this is my chicken soup. Every country has got their own chicken soup recipe and a lot of those recipes ask for the chicken to be boiled from anything from an hour to like 12 hours. I'm not a fan of boiled chicken, right? What I tend to do is I like to roast my chickens and then pull off the meat, use the carcass to make a stock, and it works really well on a Monday after your chicken roast. So I'm gonna strip this chicken of its meat and use the carcass to make the stock. First up, chicken skin. Take that out, you don't want that in your stock, but we do want to keep it for the fat that's going to come out of it for the matzo balls that we're making in a minute. Next up, take your chicken carcass, put that into your pan, and then you want to have all these juices that are packed full of chicken flavor, they need to go in as well. Then your chicken skins into a medium to low oven so that they can render out the chicken fat. Now, what goes in next is the holy trinity of stock, onion, carrot, and celery. couple of bay leaves and then completely cover with water. Submerge the carcass, lid on, bring it up to the boil, turn it down to a simmer and let that guy tick away for two hours. Next up, the matzo balls. How you make this is that you have a bunch of matzo crackers that you've blitzed down into this fine meal or you can actually get the matzo meal flour sort of vibe fine matzo meal. Um, you need to start with four eggs, broken into a bowl and whisk them together. Mm -hmm. 130 grams of the matzo meal in and just bring it together in the bowl with the egg. Little cheeky trick that you can add to help your matzo balls really fluff up is half a teaspoon of baking powder. Get that in as well. Season with freshly cracked pepper, and then I'm going to take the chicken fat that's rendered out of the chicken skin and put three teaspoons into the matzo ball mixture. Now it's wet to start off with, but then as the meal starts absorbing the egg, it becomes solid. So you need to wet your hands and then you're going to form them into individual balls. Now, these balls are going to double in size when you drop them in the soup, they suck it all in. So just have that, think that through. You can do massive ones as they do like at Katz's Deli, or I'm gonna do these guys, which are perfect for the way I like it. Now, drop those to the side and then let's check how our stock's doing. Now, as you're cooking your chicken stock, you need to just keep skimming off the fat that's present, comes to the top and it just sits at the top and you just need to keep going with your ladle and skimming it off the top. You can use that fat to make the matzo balls or the chicken skin, whatever's easiest for you. The important thing to remember with this is, is if you boil your chicken stock hard and fast, it's gonna make it a lot cloudier. I want this to be somewhat clear. And so that's why it's got to simmer, so just tickle away so you get a clearer stock. That's had two hours on the stove. It's looking flavoursome. I'm gonna pass it twice, first through a colander. Right, I'm gonna discard that little lot. Just give it a wiggle to get rid of all the juice out of it. And then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it through a fine sieve back into the pot that it was cooked in. Now, that chicken stock's absolutely great, and you can serve it like that, but if you want to take it to the next level and get a bit chefy, colander in, muslin cloth in and push down, and then we're going to pour the stock 
through to just get all the fine impurities out. Okay, put that aside and let's get on with the vegetables that we're going to poach in it. Now I'm going to poach some beautiful fresh veg, carrot, celery and onion in that stock, which is really going to add body to it and sweetness and it's really healthy and good for you. Now, most veg that's in a chicken soup has been boiled to death. I'm like, this is January, I want something healthy. I want something that I'm gonna eat and is feeding my heart and my soul and my health. So that's why I obsess about cutting my carrots and my celery exactly the same size. So when I poach them, they're all gonna cook just to al dente and then they're full of all their goodness still. And it just helps the whole thing rather than just being having the living daylights boiled right out of them. Now, that's those three vegetables done, but there's one other that I want to get into the party, sweet corn. Sweet corn's not in a Jewish soup traditionally or not in the recipes that I've seen. And it works so well with chicken. It's sweet, it's delicious, and it's gonna add a beautiful flavor to this soup. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna char it in a griddle pan so I get that beautiful caramelization of the sweet corn, and then I'm gonna cut shards off it. So presentation-wise, it's gonna look amazing, but also, it's gonna taste delish. So I've got those all gnarly and caramelized. Let's get them off the heat, and then we're just gonna cut them off the core into nice shards. Presentation-wise, it will look the bomb. I've got my stock back, bringing it up to a simmer, so let's now bring in this soup to the end. So, your onions, your celery, and your carrot, let's get them in, along with the matzo balls. Okay, it's at its final stages. And so what we're gonna do is, is another little food busker twist because we all need as much help as we can get. One shot of brandy, just drop that in. It's gonna work really well with the chicken stock. The chicken that I picked off earlier, we're now gonna get that in. Get all of that in. And then your sweet corn from earlier, we're gonna get that in. Put those in a couple of minutes before the veg is just perfect to warm through and then it's time to serve off. Right, chicken soup to make Mrs. Food Busker well. I served this to her once and it, it did the trick. Oh, oh. This will make you feel better whenever you have it. You are just getting all the depth of flavor that's come from the bones. It's just so chickeny. But then what you've got is you've got the sweetness of the, um, of the sweet corn in there. Now, what's great is you have all that going on and then veg with a bite. So it's like, oh, that's good for me. That bowl of soup is back of the net all over the shop, I reckon. Four quid, 450. It's soup, let's say four pound. Let's take it to the streets of Shepherd's Bush Market and see what people will pay. Go on. It's not gonna bite. It's not, it's not, it's not. It's not. Go for it, go, go. Will you, will you just, just give me this? <laughs> Concentrate the job in hand. Tasty? Yeah, tasty. Very chickeny? Chickeny. Yeah. How much do you think for one bowl? How much? Five pounds. Five pounds? I'll take it. <laughs> no, I don't want the five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love how fascinated this one is. Who's, who's this? Charlie. Hello, Charlie. How are you? Soup. Yeah, it's like, where's his chicken soup, if you don't mind? <laughs> now, a couple of questions. First one is, what would you pay for it? What do you think it's worth, one bowl like that? Um, I'd probably pay five or six pounds. Five or six pounds, I'll take that. Is he tighter uh, than you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was going to say four or five, but it is very good. <laughs> we'll take it, we'll take it. And then, if you were ill, 
Is that the chicken soup that would make you better? It's very good. Yeah. Three nil, chicken soup. Honestly, make it. If you're not feeling too good, this will get you back into full health. Look at this lot. Subscribe. Oh.